Hello class, this digital story is called The Infocani Wars, A Study of Language and Interpretation. By the end of this lesson, we will identify the importance of language and perspective interpretation of historical events, and we will discuss the implications internal warfare has on a group of people's ability to resist enemies, and what causes the meaning of conflicts to change. So what were the Infocani, or Difficani, depending on who you ask? The Infocani, or Difficani, Whereas a series of wars in southern Africa between 1815 and 1840. The combatants of these wars include the Soto, the Zulu, and Swazi people. These wars would shape the scope of southern Africa for many years to come. The victorious chiefdom calls this series of conflicts the Infakani, which translated to English means the crushing. The defeated chiefdoms call this series of conflicts the Difficani, which translates to the scattering. The Infocani occurred as a result of three main factors having to do with corn, water, and ivory. In the early 1800s, African chiefdoms began growing corn. This crop resulted in high yields, which increased the population to unsustainable levels. This caused a shortage in water. Southern Africa also went through climatic change at the time, making the area drier. There were more people, but there were less resources to go around, which resulted in a greater level of conflict. In addition to food and water, Africans also competed over the ivory trade. By the early 1800s, Europeans from Portugal had established trading posts all along the coast of Eastern Africa. Already engaged in competition over food and water, Africans competed over capital that resulted from the ivory trade. I wanted the name Teto to stand for peace, not total war. I wanted my armies to bring subjugation, not destruction. To subdue another tribe, you must strike it once and for all. Total war, total subjugation to the paramount king and total destruction to anyone who raises even a whisper against him. The victors of the Infocani, or Difficani, were the Zulu. The clip we just watched was two African leaders arguing over the usage of total war. Traditionally in African warfare, it was only the armies that engaged each other. In total war, civilians were now fair game. The leader of the Zulu Shaka was one of the first advocates of total war. This tactic deprived the enemies of the Zulu of the resources necessary to continue warfare against them. The Zulu also devised the cow horn tactic, which is the one shown above. Traditionally, African armies lined up in two large groups across from one another. Shaka split his group into three, allowing him to surround and completely destroy his enemies. When the opposing army had exhausted their throwing spears, the Zulu engaged them in close combat. This had a devastating effect on the opposing army, as they were unarmed after they threw their spear. Shaka also outfit his soldiers with different weaponry. The Zulu carried short stabbing spears in addition to the long throwing spears. Salute your king! Bueno and Bueno and in addition to militaristic changes, Shaka also made cultural changes to the Zulu. Shaka separated his soldiers from their families at a young age and forced them to pledge loyalty to him. Thus, the Zulu were a more cohesive unit than most of the armies they faced. The other chieftains involved in this conflict call this conflict the Difficani, or the Scattering. The defeated chieftains were forced to move away from the area. The Soto people moved south and formed a large state there called Basotho. This state is where the modern country of Lesotho gets its name. The Swazi moved north and west and formed the state of Swaziland, which remains a country today. While the Zulu look at this time period as a time of great victory. Other groups in the area 
see this time as a time of great suffering. The perception of these wars today is dependent on who is telling the story. Africans today continue to debate whether Shaka Zulu is a hero or a villain. After the Infokani, the Zulu were left as the dominant state in southern Africa. The Swazi and the Soto had also formed major states. What was once an area of many small states became an area of a few large states. In addition, the nature of warfare in southern Africa had changed. The desperation of the conflict, caused by shortages of food and water, changed how warfare was conducted. Chieftains no longer spared civilians in battle. The implementation of these total war policies caused many of the chieftains to leave the area. This depopulated the area, called Natal. The depopulation of Natal allowed Dutch settlers, known as Boers, to come settle there. Prior to the Infokani, many Africans would have been living in the area. However, because the area was depopulated, the Dutch met little resistance in their settlement. The political structure, the conduct of warfare, and the ability of Africans to defend themselves against European settlers had changed. The Umfakani, or Difakani, will forever be remembered as an event that altered the world in one way or another. How? Well, that just depends on who you ask.